boy. Good boy. Touch. Good. Touch. Touch. Hello, my name is Vicky Laws and I'm going to talk about classical and operant conditioning. So what is classical and operant conditioning and how can we use it? Classical conditioning and operant conditioning are used to create learning within the dog. Classical conditioning pairs two stimuli. For example, when a dog hears a click sound or a whistle, it knows that there's a reward coming. Operant conditioning pairs behaviour and a response. So, for example, the dog has to perform an action to get the reward. We're going to talk about marker words now and how that fits in with the learning and why we would use one. A marker word can be linked to a verbal clicker. It allows you to mark the exact behaviour the dog offers as he offers it, which removes the delay bridges the gap from the action required to the treat. For example, when teaching a recall, you actually want to mark the action of the dog turning back towards you once you've called it. With a marker word, you can mark that turn and the dog knows it has done the right thing and comes back to you knowing it will receive a reward. It's also useful shaping behaviours, as the marker word or clicker can be very precise and so allowing for exact timing. Marker words can be anything, anything, common words such as yes, win, but anything short and sharp will do. So how do you teach a marker word? Well, a marker word is taught by using classical conditioning, putting the sound with the stimuli, just as you would condition the sound of a clicker. The same is done for a marker word. For example, our marker word is going to be yes. So you would have a handful of treats, and in quick succession, you would mark the word and treat the dog. Yes, treat, yes, treat, and so on. Yes. 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 So then you can start to reward in other ways, such as play and praise. So that's a fairly concise description of classical operant conditioning and using marker words. This short film will demonstrate um, the level of obedience I can help you achieve with your dog, um, which is needed when you're out and about in the real life in parks and walking down the street. There are many ways to teach a dog to walk on a loose lead by your side. One of my preferred methods, if you have a dog that's interested in a toy, is to use the toy to keep their attention on you and on the toy. So what I tend to do is, once my dog's got some interest in the toy, as you can see, Riley's looking at the toy really well. So I'm gonna put it under my arm so that his focus is now on me. So as I walk forward, the dog is following, walking by my side quite nicely. Although he's focused on the toy, it means that I get a loose lead and he's looking at me. As I get the dog into the position that I want, which is this position, then I can put in the command that I want to use, in this case, heel. So I'm linking the word heel with Riley and this position around my side, which is where I want him. To reward him, all I then need to do is drop the ball. But I do make sure that I only drop the ball when Riley's in the position that I want him in. So as we've seen, I now have Riley walking beside me on a loose lead, using the ball to focus his attention on me. So now we're going to start making it a bit more difficult for Riley, giving him some turns and different change of pace. Good boy, heel. Good lad. As you can see, Riley's very focused on the ball. Come. So I'm just turning round and he's following me. I can turn left or right and Riley's with me. All the time, I am having him on a loose lead. Now obviously he's focused on the ball, but if I was to say nothing else and just keep commanding heel, as we've said, he would link the command. I can also change my pace to very slowly or quicken up. And then I drop the ball and I've rewarded him for staying by me in the heel. 
Another really important command to teach your dog, of course, is recall. It's probably one of the most important commands you'll ever teach your dog because obviously when you recall your dog he's going to be off lead and the chances of you recalling your dog when nothing's about is pretty slim. Normally when you recall your dog it's because you need him to come back to you and that's normally when there are distractions about. So the recall is really important. I'm going to start off recalling my dog with no distractions so he learns just to come to me when calling him. So I'm going to start off by putting Riley in a sit. Sit. Good boy. The command I use is wait. When I leave him, I don't use stay because when I use stay, I want him to stay put. It's the command I'm going to use before I set off. Wait. I walk away really briskly because if I creep away from him or walk backwards, the likelihood is he's going to come to me. And then I'm going to recall him. Riley, come. Good boy. There's a good boy. And if I was to reward Riley with a treat then, I would make sure that I had my hand in his collar before I gave him the treat, just so that he didn't learn to take the treat and run. Wait, wait. Good boy, wait. Wait. What I'm doing now is just proofing Riley's wait command by asking him to wait, wait, walking away and walking back so that he doesn't anticipate when I turn around he's going to come to me. This is just proofing his weight and keeping him nice and solid. Wait. Meaning that when I walk away and finally turn around and call him, He's got a solid sit. Oh, he come. Good boy. Good lad. As you can see, as he came to me, I put my hand in his collar. And I would do this whether I was treating him or not. If I treat him without my hand in his collar, he might learn to take the treat and run away. So it's always best to just put your hand in your dog's collar when they come to you before you reward them. Where's your ball? Oh, good lad, what you got? What you got? Good boy. Lad, good boy. Thank you. Leave, good lad. So I'm now going to do a sit stay with Riley. Again, a really com important command. You need to have a good solid stay for your dog. If you're one side of the road, you find yourself one side of the road and your dog the other, you need to be able to ask your dog to stay while you cross over to him. Okay, so I'm going to ask Riley to stay. I get his eye contact first before I give him the command. I'm going to ask him to stay, stay. And I'm going to walk away. Now in a stay, I stand sideways onto my dog, because if I turn to face him, he might think it's a recall. So while we're training, I just give him the side of my body rather than the front, just so that he doesn't get confused. And I'm going to go back and praise him but before I praise him I'm just going to wait just a second so that he doesn't get really used to anticipating me coming back and moving good boy another really important thing when you're doing a stay is to reward them really calmly if you go back and jump around with them then they get really excited and that again can break the stay a really important command that I like to teach is an instant down I find that really, this really useful if you're in a busy park and your dog is a little way away from you and you may have young children running in between you and your dog, your dog is coming towards you, you can stop him and put him in a down so that he doesn't need to cross over in front of the children and possibly knock them over. So this is a demonstration of the instant down. Wait. I'm going to get some distance between me and Riley. Then I'm going to stop him halfway. The reason I've got my ball is because I'm going to reward him as he drops rather than when he gets back to me. Will he come? Down! Good lad. You've seen some basic commands demonstrated with just myself and Riley in an empty hall. 
which can be fairly easy to train. However, the hardest thing with a dog is to train all of that to be successful when there are distractions. And of course, in real life, distractions are the local park and other dogs. So I'm going to show you now those same commands, but with distractions of other dogs, so that I can show you that I can teach you and your dog to achieve this standard. Wiley, come. First thing we're going to do is heel work. And as you can see, Riley's looking at the other dogs, but I'm not having any tension on the lead because I've asked Riley to heel. Riley, heel. Good boy. I just gave Riley a small command then as I passed the other dogs, just to remind him that I want him with me, even though he was looking at the other dogs. Riley, heel. Now I'm going to recall Riley through a number of dogs and one of the most important times you'll ever recall your dog is when you're in the park with other dogs. It's really important to be able to recall your dog away from other dogs. So I'm just going to walk around and once Riley starts sniffing another dog or goes towards one, I'm going to recall him away. Riley come! Good lad, good boy. Sit. Good boy. Sit. Good boy. Good lad. Good boy. <laughs> Riley, come. come. Sit. Good boy. Good lad. Good boy. next thing we're going to do is a sit stay and a down stay with distractions and as I've said this is again one of the most important things because this is real life it's going to be in the park when there are other dogs or children about when you need your dog to stay put so here we go this is the sit stay Riley watch stay Stay. Stay. Good boy. Good boy. Riley, down. Good. Watch. Stay. When you're teaching your dog this in the park with distractions, there's nothing wrong in repeating the command to the dog, stay. Just so the dog knows that you're still with him. And if he's anyway a little bit unconfident, repeating the command to him will just make him feel a little bit more secure. Stay. Good boy, very good boy.